Hello everyone, welcome to Scalp Acupuncture featuring Scalp Acupuncture Techniques presented by Lamp Acu Wellness Foundation, Inc. Most modern acupuncture practitioners use disposable stainless steel needles of 0.18 to 0.30 millimeter diameter sterilized with ethylene oxide or by autoclave. The upper third of these needles are wound with a thicker wire, a metal pipe, or covered in plastic in order to stiffen the needle and provide a handle for the practitioner to grasp and manipulate while inserting and stimulating. The size and type of needle used and the depth of insertion depend on the acupuncture modalities being practiced. For scalp acupuncture, the size of Chinese needles is number 30 to number 36. The size of Japanese needles is number 6 to number 9. Needles 1 or 1.5 inches in length are commonly used for scalp acupuncture, depending on the area to be stimulated and the patient's condition. For the novice practitioner, Relatively thicker needles are recommended because the scalp is tougher than the skin and thinner needles are too easily bent upon insertion. The positions of both patient and practitioner are important. Patients should be made as comfortable as possible in the treatment position because it is difficult to adjust this position once the needles have been placed. The ideal position for scalp acupuncture treatment is sitting. This allows the practitioner to easily inspect, identify anatomical landmarks, and insert and stimulate needles on different sides of the head based on the treatment design. Patients should be positioned so that they do not need to move their head while the needles are in place. Although most patients can be treated in this manner, some with motor or balance disorders must be treated with extra care, their bodies well supported in the prone, supine, or lateral recumbent position. This is especially useful for first-time treatment with scalp acupuncture as it allays feelings of nervousness or anxiety. The practitioner should be in a comfortable upright balanced position that allows freedom of movement in order to find the most suitable position to insert and stimulate the needles. While performing treatment, the practitioner should assume the Tai Chi posture. This means standing with the feet shoulder width distance apart, relaxing the shoulders and elbows, and extending or opening the chest while contracting the abdomen. This posture allows the practitioner's chi to flow freely from the body to the hands, thus enhancing the results of the acupuncture treatment. Before needle insertion, the needling area should be cleaned with a 75% alcohol swab or cotton ball. Hair or any other obstruction should be moved away to expose the stimulation area. The needle should be inserted by using the freehand technique instead of a guide tube, which is a popular insertion technique in the West. This is due to the special anatomy of the scalp, which has five layers as described on the slide. Skin, connective tissue, epicranial aponeurosis, loose areolar tissue, and pericranium. In the Chinese scalp acupuncture, a 30 to 36 gauge stainless steel acupuncture needle with a length of 1.5 inches is placed into the loose areolar tissue layer beneath the epicranial aponeurosis and above the pericranium. To place the needle correctly, hold the needle with the non-dominant hand. 
place the tip at a 15 to 25 degree angle to the skin. Use the dominant hand to quickly pierce the skin and thread the needle through the loose areolar tissue layer for the entire 1 to 1.5 inches length of the needle shaft. It is much easier for the practitioner to insert the needle toward him or herself than toward the patient because the practitioner's wrist can then insert with much greater force and control. If resistance is encountered, the needle is most likely in the aponeurosis or the pericranium. Withdrawing the needle slightly and repositioning the angle will usually result in successful insertion. In the vertigo and hearing area, the balance area, and the lower two-fifths of the motor and sensory areas, there is an additional muscle layer under the epicranial aponeurosis and above the pericranium. In these areas, the needle will be in the muscle layer. Insert the needles carefully to avoid a muscle spasm. Having the patient relax the jaw will help. If muscle contraction prevents full insertion of the needle, you may use a second needle to cover the entire area. Hold the needle 2 to 3 millimeters away from its tip with the thumb and index finger of the dominant hand from a distance of 4 to 6 centimeters above the scalp push the needle quickly into the areolar layer this insertion method is relatively difficult to master and could cause patients additional pain if done by a novice it is highly recommended to insert a needle in the ear point Shenman at the very beginning of the treatment to help relax the patient, reduce any sensitivity to pain, and in general to ease him or her through the initial experience. The ear needles can be left in place for the duration of the scalp acupuncture treatment. If the patient experiences sharp pain during the needling, it is often caused by insertion of needles either too shallowly or too deep. Pushing the needle in a little more to a deeper desired depth or withdrawing the needle and relocating it at a smaller angle or a more shallow level can relieve the unpleasant feeling. It is advisable to adjust any needle that is painful as soon as the patient reports it. The practitioner should recheck with the patient often during and after the treatment to verify if there is any increase or change in the pain because some patients may experience discomfort later such as when they talk, drink, or eat. The proper angle, depth, and speed of inserting needles reduce sensations of pain and discomfort significantly. To review, the needle should be inserted at a 15 to 25 degree angle, close to parallel to the skin, and 1 to 2 inches in depth. While the needle penetrates the skin, the practitioner's fingers will have a slight sense of tightness at first. When the needle reaches the loose areolar layer, the practitioner's fingers will feel the tightness disappear or reduce. Once the layer becomes looser, the needle will smoothly push deeper with little or no resistance. At this time, push the needle to the designated depth as quickly 
as possible. The speed of insertion is important for scalp acupuncture. The faster the needle is inserted, the less pain the patient feels. It only takes one to two seconds for an experienced practitioner to insert a needle. After insertion, if the practitioner feels tightness in the skin or the patient feels much pain, it usually means the needle has been inserted either too shallowly or too deeply. If this happens, the needle should be pulled out a little, redirected, and pushed in again. Or, more simply, take the needle out and insert a new one, heeding the above directions. Many different needling methods have been applied in scalp acupuncture in order to enhance stimulation on scalp areas. Some of these are described in ancient acupuncture classics, and some have been created by modern scalp acupuncture practitioners. The most useful methods are described in the following slides. Triple method. In this method, three needles are inserted at different spots and are toward one point, with one needle in the center and the other two on both sides. This technique is very useful on praxis area for patients with apraxia or on the lower two-fifths of the motor area for patients with a paralyzed hand. Crossing method. This is another new method created by scalp acupuncture practitioners. Two or three needles are inserted at different spots and cross under the skin. This technique is often applied on chorea and tremor area for a patient with Parkinson's disease or on vascular contraction and dilation area for patients with essential hypertension. Relay method. In this new method created by modern scalp acupuncture practitioners, the second and third needles are inserted immediately after insertion of the initial needle, as if they were in a relay race. It is a common technique to treat patients of both upper and uh, lower limbs so the entire motor area can be stimulated quickly. Penetrating method. In this method, one needle is inserted, so it is transversely penetrating more than one point. This method is the most commonly used technique in scalp acupuncture treatment because the place needled on the scalp is in fact not a point but an area. Using the penetrating method, one needle can cover and stimulate an entire area. Contralateral method. This is one of nine needling methods described in the Huang Ting Neijing Yellow Emperor's Classic of Internal Medicine. Needle the points on the right side of the body when the disorder is located on the left side or vice versa. This method is very useful to treat hemiplegia, pain, and abnormal sensation in one side of the body due to stroke and other upper neuron damage because the right side of the cerebral cortex controls movement and sensation on the left side of the body and vice versa. For example, when a stroke patient presents paralysis on the left arm and leg, his right motor area on the scalp should be needled. Manipulation, rotation or twirling. Once the needle is in the correct position, it is stimulated with manual manipulation. 
grasp the handle of the needle between the thumb and the distal interphalangeal joint of the index finger. By moving the index finger and keeping the thumb stationary, you can twirl the needle at a rate of 200 times per minute. Rotate clockwise and counterclockwise with amplitude ranging from 360 to 720 degrees. In other words, make one to two turns in each direction. Rotate needles every 10 minutes for two to three minutes. Take care not to push or pull the needle while twirling, as this can be quite painful. Two hands stimulation is very useful for some of the special needling methods, such as the crossing method. During stimulation of the needles, encourage the paralyzed patient to move the affected area actively and passively. Electrical stimulation may be used to replace hand stimulation. It can strengthen the stimulation and improve the therapeutic effect for practitioners who cannot rotate needles at the minimum of 200 times per minute. If this method is chosen, a pair of needles is connected to the electric stimulator. It is generally recommended to stimulate a pair at one time, usually choosing pairs on the same scalp area. The negative lead from the stimulating device is connected to the secondary area and the positive lead is connected to the primary stimulating area on the scalp. The recommended frequency for the sensory area is in the 100 to 150 Hz range and for other areas in the 4 to 30 Hz range. This is equal to approximately 200 to 400 rotations per minute. The ideal intensity should be at the level that the patient can feel some tingling or vibrating sensation without causing any pain. The duration of electrical stimulation is 10 to 20 minutes. During the stimulation period, the patient may feel that the sensation of tingling or vibration gradually diminishes or disappears due to adaptation. It often happens after the first few minutes. If this occurs, the electrical output should be adjusted in intensity to re-establish the sensation. It is necessary to inform patients who receive electrical acupuncture that it may produce sensations of tingling, numbness, sleepiness, heaviness, or distension. Their prior knowledge of this will help to allay any feelings of anxiety or fear they may have about the treatment. The device should not be turned on until after the acupuncture needles are in place and the electrodes connected. Frequency should be set first when the device is turned on with intensity starting from 0 Hz and increasing gradually to avoid a shock. The waveform chosen can provide slightly different stimulation and responses. It is generally believed that intermittent waves produce more stimulation than continuous waves, and mixed waves have an effect between the two. For patients with severe heart disease or who faint easily, electrical stimulation should be avoided. Arrival of qi is an especially important phenomenon for predicting the effect of acupuncture treatment. In the Huang Teenaging Ling Zhu, the Yellow Emperor's classic of internal medicine, spiritual axis, it says that Acupuncture therapy does not take effect until the arrival of qi. Quick arrival of qi suggests good effects in treatment. Slow arrival of qi shows a retarded effect. The term arrival of qi means 
that the acupuncture practitioner manipulates the inserted needle so as to induce in the patient a sensation of soreness, numbness, heaviness, and distension around the point, or the transmission of these sensations upward and downward along the channels. In regular body acupuncture, needle manipulation may induce signs of the arrival of chi around or radiating from the insertion point. In contrast, needle manipulation in scalp acupuncture may induce the arrival of chi in areas distal to the needling site, such as the face, neck, back, abdomen, or limbs. Quite interestingly, the distal sensations often occur in the affected limb rather than the normal limb. While inserting and stimulating scalp needles, pay close attention to the patient's reactions. Patients may experience some sensations in the body such as tingling, numbness, heat, cold, movement, or twitching of certain muscles. Alteration in the color or moisture of the skin along a channel can also be observed during scalp acupuncture treatment. Although such reactions vary from patient to patient, depending upon both the patient's constitution and the quality of the scalp acupuncture treatment, they provide a useful tool to predict the patient's response and prognosis. Some patients respond more quickly than others. It is a good prognostic sign if the patient does feel something during the needle stimulation. This is not, however, necessary for recovery. During or after scalp acupuncture, the patient may occasionally experience some sensations in the affected body part. This is considered a normal reaction. Besides the sensations listed above, patients may also feel heaviness, electrical sensation, muscle spasm, a sensation of water or energy moving, visible muscle twitching, and even involuntary movement. In addition, a few patients may experience temporary exacerbation of some symptoms in the affected area during or after the process of stimulation. This is considered a positive sign, as those patients usually show faster improvement. However, this is not essential and many patients will still experience immediate satisfactory results. Approximately 80% of patients show minor to major improvement after their first scalp acupuncture treatment. In many cases, patients' abnormal sensations of pain, numbness, tingling, burning, or increased sensitivity to touch may also be partially or completely relieved during or after the process of scalp acupuncture treatment. The needles are stimulated for approximately 2-3 to three minutes and re-stimulated at 10-minute intervals over the course of treatment. Most treatments of scalp acupuncture last 30-45 to 45 minutes. Some practitioners have left needles in place for as many as one to three days. Do not leave them in for more than 72 hours due to the risk of infection. Most disorders that respond quickly to acupuncture require treatment two to three times per week initially. Exceptions to this are acute disorders that may need daily treatment. The interval between treatments may be extended to a week once improvements are stable for the full period between visits. Once the improvements have lasted from several days to a full week, treatments may be spaced every 10 days to 2 weeks. After recovery from the initial complaints, Patients can return on an as-needed basis 
or schedule monthly maintenance visits. A therapeutic course in the West consists of 10 treatments at intervals between visits of from 5 to 7 days. In China and other Asian countries, patients are usually treated daily if they are in a hospital. This is because the cost of acupuncture treatment in Asia is inexpensive compared to Western countries. According to experience, two or three treatments per week are efficient and effective for patients who are not hospitalized. These patients can recover as quickly as if they were treated every day. Needle removal is accomplished with one swift motion. Begin by pressing down the hair around the needle with one hand. Meanwhile, hold the needle between the thumb and index finger of the other hand. Rotate the needle gently to make sure it is loose and then withdraw it quickly. After that, press the needled area with a dry cotton ball for a short while to prevent bleeding. Because of the scalp's rich blood supply, the needled sites bleed more frequently on removal of the needle than at other body sites. It is therefore important to press the needle site a little longer and recheck it after removing the cotton ball. For some patients, there is bleeding not at the moment the needles are removed, but later after removal. To be safe, it is always best to recheck the scalp for bleeding as well as for needles as sometimes they become hidden in the hair. Most patients do not experience abnormal feelings at the conclusion of their treatment. However, it is recommended that patients rest in the clinic for about 10 to 30 minutes if they feel at all lightheaded or disoriented. But by far, most patients feel relaxed after a treatment. The rare patient who experiences exhaustion after treatment should be advised to take it easy for the rest of the day. Whatever the immediate subjective or objective responses reported by the patient, be they symptoms and signs of improvement or exacerbation of complaints, this should be considered as positive responses. Any exacerbation usually diminish after a few hours or at least by 48 hours. It is inadvisable to apply scalp acupuncture on any scalp area where there is infection, ulcer, tumor, or a post-operative scalp defect. Also, it is inadvisable to treat an infant whose fontanel has not yet closed. Do not use scalp acupuncture on patients with a tendency to hemorrhage or on those with severe hypertension, high fever, or in an acute stage of cerebral hemorrhage. Scalp acupuncture is a relatively safe treatment and has no risk of injury to the brain because of the skull beneath the scalp. Some common incidents under management are listed in the following slides. Fainting. Needling in scalp acupuncture into the correct layer is a relative challenge, at least initially. This is especially true for practitioners who usually use a guide tube for needle insertion and who have little experience with freehand needle insertion. It could be relatively painful for the patient and could easily cause fainting if he or she is in a sitting position, too nervous, hungry, or very weak. In mild cases, the patient may experience lightheadedness, dizziness, nausea, shortness of breath, palpitation, cold sweats, or become pale. In severe cases, there may be loss of consciousness, 
a drop in blood pressure or incontinence of urine or stool. When fainting occurs, stop needling and stimulating immediately and withdraw all the needles already in place. The practitioner needs to assist the patient to lie down and then offer the patient some warm water or candy. The patient usually feels better after resting for a short period of time. In severe cases, if the patient has shown loss of consciousness, do acupressure or needle GV26, pericardium 6, pericardium 9, and LI4, or use moxibustion on CV6, CV4, and kidney 1. Stuck needles are more commonly seen in scalp acupuncture treatment than other types of acupuncture because of the five layers in the scalp. After a needle is inserted, it could become stuck in the scalp, making it difficult to manipulate or impossible to withdraw. Quite often, this results from inserting the needle in a wrong layer of the scalp, rotating the needle in one direction only, or an even manipulation. Occasionally, it is caused by muscular tension or cramping in a very nervous patient. A stuck needle should be managed in different ways according to its cause. If the stuck needle is caused by insertion of the needle in the wrong layer of the scalp, the condition will release after the needle is withdrawn. If the stuck needle is due to rotating it in only one direction, the condition usually releases when the needle is twirled in the opposite direction. For the patient with a stuck needle due to muscular tension or spasm, the needle often loosens up after the patient has relaxed for a few minutes. Massaging the scalp near the stuck area or inserting another needle nearby can be very effective in loosening up the tense muscle and releasing the stuck needle as well. Hematoma is much less seen in scalp acupuncture treatment due to the anatomy of the scalp. It may be caused by injury to blood vessels and not pressing the area after withdrawing the needle. Usually, there is no special management needed. Mild hematoma will disappear by itself in a few days if it occurs. A cold compress and light massage are recommended if there is severe hematoma. Most patients are responsive to the initial scalp acupuncture treatment and show some improvement with the first session or at least within three treatments. 80% of patients have a good response and even major improvement early on. The likelihood of experiencing a positive response following the initial treatment is dependent on the nature and duration of the disease, the patient's constitutional condition, and his or her motivation to improve. Generally speaking, patients fall into several categories of improvement. Some show a gradual and progressive improvement. Some have an amelioration of symptoms, followed by a return to the presenting conditions, such as in multiple sclerosis and Parkinson's disease. And some appear to have an exacerbation of their symptoms, followed by major improvement. In a few cases, there will be no change in their symptoms at all. It may take two or more treatments for patients to notice a difference in their disorder. Therefore, it is inappropriate to change the treatment plan prematurely if the practitioner has confidence in the diagnosis and choice of treatment. As a general rule, 
the practitioner should repeat the same initial program at the second and third sessions of treatment with a modification in intensity of manual stimulation or electrical stimulation to accommodate for deficiencies or excesses in the first treatment. If a patient is not responsive by the third treatment, the practitioner should reconsider the accuracy of the diagnosis, treatment principle, and location of the area stimulated. If these parameters appear to be correct, the practitioner's next step should be to reassess both the patient's vitality and motivation and the practitioner's choice of treatment location. A patient with low vitality and motivation usually responds more slowly than one with normal vitality and greater motivation. With such a patient, it is appropriate to add body acupuncture at source points, back shoe points, or front mu points, combined with supplementing methods such as moxibustion to enhance the treatment program. Increasing the duration or frequency of the treatment will not change the results at all. For the patient with multiple symptoms, the goal of the initial treatment should be focused on the major complaint. The secondary clinical manifestations can be addressed after the major complaint has shown marked improvement. In such cases, this will maintain the confidence and interest of the patient in the treatment so that he or she will look forward to continuing treatments. The uh, practitioner should avoid addressing too many symptoms at once especially for the patient with no prior acupuncture experience. In supervising many scalp acupuncture clinics, it is often observed that the initial location and uh, preliminary stimulation might have been incorrect. The revised choice of therapeutic location may start at the fourth visit, or in the case of a patient with low vitality, the fourth treatment may be focused more on general supplementing of the qi with little attention to the chief complaint. Sometimes patients show no change from the presenting condition after a few treatments because they have reduced or stopped the medication that has been used to control the symptoms. It is necessary to explain to patients that they should continue to take any medication they were taking before acupuncture started until consulting their primary physician. If a patient is still not responding after the fourth visit, the practitioner should consider shifting to a different treatment strategy by reviewing the initial interview and all earlier notes. The practitioner should consider shifting to a different kind of treatment altogether if the patient's symptoms and signs have not changed after five to six visits. It is common for patients to experience early positive results and then to reach a plateau of improvement after only a few treatments. It is also common that the patient's initial positive responses do not relieve the symptoms of their major complaints. In such conditions, an additional technique or needling area in combination with the original ones can be very helpful. For example, it might be necessary to stimulate the speech 2 or speech 3 areas after a patient with motor aphasia has shown some signs of improvement. After a patient has shown major improvement, the treatment strategy would change to focus on continuation of treatments as infrequently as possible with the objective only to maintain and consolidate the improvements already achieved. Every case is different based on a myriad of conditions and practitioners must be ever vigilant and open to the changes and needs of their patients. Thank you very much for your attention and hope to see you in our next videos.